All right, I'm welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trade. State is Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, markets here uh, having a major update, obviously. Uh, as you can see, FOMC statement today, 25 rate, uh, 25 base point rate hike. Obviously, that was based baked into the cake already. Nobody really... Um, was disputing that that was going to happen. Uh, and then Powell came out, obviously, with his press conference, said that, um, you know, he's going to continue to hike rates, um, inflation, you know, jobs not done, that type of talk. But the market's rallying anyway, and that's really all that matters. We don't really care what Powell says specifically. We just care about the market's reaction. And that's why positioning matters so much and why um, I've been, you know, kind of on the on the key here that Yes, it's still bear market rally, but we can still go higher. And yes, it is still a bear market rally. I know I'm going to get pushed back on that um, right now, but that's what it is here. We have to sucker in some more longs, and um, then it's going to be about time here. And just by the way, if you guys are new to the channel, this you know I was telling people you should go short here, and you know I got pushed back on that. Um, I got pushed back for saying to go long here, but now everybody wants to go long. Now that we've gone from 375 to 4, 413 now, we'll probably get up to 415 um, at this point, maybe even 417, uh, maybe even tomorrow. We do have Meta reporting after the bell. Um, I don't think the market really cares that much about Meta, um, but it is an important benchmark for kind of consumer. You know, Snap had earnings yesterday, so... Um, you know, it is again, and that is bouncing off the lows. But either way, and then we have Amazon, Google, and Apple tomorrow. Those are the big ones. Um, irregardless, we are getting through this rising wedge um, trend line here, and we said that that was a possibility, right? So we talked about the Russell to that. Look at the Russell here, up 2.4 percent on the day. What a power move there for the IWM. That probably wants to go up and fill that gap. Well, that's a little bit of a ways away, but it's you know it's getting up there. But either way, um, this is not the type of stuff you see at the beginning of a bull market. And what do I mean by that? Like, let's look at stocks like Carvana. Um, this is up 200%, just under 200% year to date. Um, like, this is a dash for trash. Um, take a look at Tesla, up 82% since January 6th. Not year to date, since January 6th. So really, in, um, not even a full month. It, again, not stuff you see at the beginning of a new bull market. It's stuff you see at the end dash for trash, junk companies starting to run, um, everybody getting bullish, power moves and in, in pretty much across the board. Um, and by the way, even if you disagree with me uh, about, you know, new bull market, whatever, what do you do you at least at least would you concede that we're closer to resistance than support at this point? Why would you want to be a buyer up here? If you I mean, you didn't want to buy down here. Um, you know, you're too scared to buy it on here, but now everybody loves it up here. And I mean, we're extended, we're overbought. So either way, um, you know, this type of move here is is, is unsustainable regard, irregardless. Um, but in any case, um, yeah, nice move here for the market. This is why we respect it. And we're not talking, you know, we never said anything like, okay, let's go like all in short here. We always want to give the market that kind of upside bias until we get a sell signal here. And, you know, we never really had any sort of, you know, volume peak or anything like that. Um, getting some good volume in coming in today, obviously, with the FOMC. But um, that's the nature of it right now. And market can still go higher. And, and again, at this point, we're probably looking at about 415. So they might even gap it up tomorrow. Who knows? We could get a gap in crap tomorrow. That's certainly a possibility. And another reason why you know that it's not the bottom is you, when it's the bottom, usually it takes several, several months uh, before anybody really starts to warm up to the market. And we're, we're basically in like 2021 mode here of euphoria. So um, either way, you can feel, feel free to disagree with me one way or another. Um, but, you know, I've done this long enough to know what this type of action usually brings. So anyways, uh, triple Q's here on the day going up into this uh, gap window there. So may, may need to pull back just a little bit. We do have that gap fill right above that, though. But it is having a nice power move. Uh, semiconductors have been strong really all day long here. And that is basically now... Um, into kind of my upside targets. I said 245, maybe 248 to 250 on a Pierce. 
but now going into this pivot high here from August, as well as you know basically coinciding with the June pivots there, then you have this sell-off bar above that. So that's where there's going to be a lot of longs trapped, and they are getting very extended here. We haven't really had a pullback outside of that little one-two there in the middle of the month, and then we did have a nice consolidation here for you know to be all to be fair there. It was a nice little inside bar, but you know very extended here. We're looking at 196 to 250 in you know, basically the last month. So semis really overbought and extended and they are into some resistance as well, but they've been holding up well. So we'll respect them until they give us a sell signal. Obviously, um, AMD, huge power move there up 13%. That is into this pivot here as well. Big move there, um, lots of shorts covering. They had a pretty good quarter as well. Um, but yeah, AMD obviously giving a lift there. Nvidia also, you know, kind of negating that sell candle from the other day. So that was a good little sell off here. Again, no, not great volume on it. So, you know, generally you want to take that with a grain of salt, but you know, a good sell off nonetheless. And that is getting reversed here up 8%. Now going into this pivot here, not pivot, but previous bear flag. And there actually are some pivots going back to March there. So that is into resistance and extended as well. Um, again, 140 to 211 here in a month. Um, okay, so anyways igv so up to uh, excuse me yeah cloud software um we talked about this gap here at 294.40 so that is probably going to get filled here i mean we're only a couple of points away and again i do think we probably gap up tomorrow um usually when you get a big power move like this you, you probably you know you get a lot of momentum coming in um, kind of the next day. So I do think we get a gap tomorrow, maybe even a gap in crap. You know, I'm not going to sit here and call it like it's going to happen. Um, I certainly wouldn't rule it out, but we should gap up tomorrow. And I think you'd at least get a pullback um, in the morning. So it's something to look for on tomorrow's radar is if you guys are day trading this. Um, Dow Transports, look at the move here. So we talked about 15,000 for quite a while and we got through that. So 15,300. And there's your pivot high. So we're right into that again. We could overshoot again. There's a gap right up here around 15.5. Uh, and then you have that previous failed inside bar that broke down right around 15.6. So that would be kind of your max move here in the short term, but big power move there for the transports finally making a higher high. But, you know, it really took them long enough. So again, they are still lagging despite the fact that they have a power move here and, you know, up four, uh, excuse me, 4.3% on the day. So big move there for djt but those are the levels there we're going to look for on the upside possibly tomorrow or maybe even friday uh okay over to interest rates let's take a look at the long bond first year zb again we still have a buy signal on this but it is interesting to me that the bonds are not making new highs with the market um so that is a slight divergence there i mean you have a high lower high it's getting a bid um but a little bit of a red flag there. So that's really the only red flag right now outside of as far as technical things are concerned and, and the transports, obviously the laggard ship, which we've talked about the last couple of days, obviously they're making up for some lost ground here today, but I want to see them leading, not lagging. Either way though, um, 30 year, you know, nice bid here, but this should be making higher highs. Um, so that is a little bit of a red flag. The two year also not making higher highs, but as long as it's above this trend line, we're still, we'll, we'll call it safe. Um, so it's hanging in there for now and, you know, hey, maybe it gets up to that target. Finally, that's I've had that sitting here since the 28th of November. So, you know, we can definitely get up there and the chart suggests that it can. We had a nice green bar here, a little up move pull back so we can still move up to that area. And that is something we'll keep on our radar here. Um, ZN, the 10 year. Again, no new highs. Um, technically, it's a failed inside bar. We did close below that, but it is up today as well. So, um, you know, maybe it can bid a little bit higher here, but a little bit of weakness here in bonds and the market's behaving as if um, Powell just cut rates to zero <laughs> and um, bonds are not quite responding the same. So, again, something to watch here. Um, I, again, I do think we probably, I mean, pulling back a little bit now, we'll probably get up to that 415 handle tomorrow though. But again, watch bonds. They will tell you everything about the market here. Anyways, um, let's get over to XHB home builders here. Again, a nice power surge. This is up into resistance at 72. So you're seeing a lot of charts here, um, that have resistance, you know, kind of like hop, skip and a jump away, right? So XHB up at these pivots, 72, you know, it's a stone's throw away. We mentioned the DJT. So you've got the 15.5. Uh, 15.6 area, 
Um, the triple Q is kind of like that. Uh, well, that one's a little bit farther away there, but like the IGV, for instance, has, you know, it's a stone's throw away from that gap fill. Um, again, so a lot of charts kind of coming into these similar areas here. Um, ITB here also higher. So that is up into the 72 handle as well, or just nearby there. Um, that one's actually outperforming a little bit, but now going into this red bar. So again, be careful with home builders here. VNQ. Hey, it's above that 200 moving average right into that 92 handle. You're now going into this pivot here. So again, it's coming to some resistance. There's a small gap just above 93 there. So that's going to be your level there on the VNQ for now. This is still kind of a laggard though, um, all things considered. Um, on to financials, still looking for the 37 handle here. And we're almost there now on XLF. We got all the way up to 36.88. I think this can get through that, but after that, it's about cooked here. Um, lots of resistance coming up into these two red bars, previous bear flag breakdown. That's where bulls are trapped. They will become sellers once we get up there. Uh, uh, XBD broker dealers pushing through my upside targets here. So um, yeah, we're through that 492 level and now into this red bar, but hey, it's holding up really well. And uh, I'll probably get to that 500 whole round number uh, tomorrow. And again, if we do gap up, that would obviously kind of coincide with that level as again we're basically just a stone's throw away all right let's move over to energy so much less exciting action going on here although crude kind of an engulfing reversal and you know crude just just loves to be just in this choppy range here or has loved uh recently and we had a nice constructive candle yesterday um so again we had a potential to put in higher lows we took that low out we're above it right now but um that's not a good, this is an ugly candle here today. So it does suggest crude probably wants to go back down and hit this white trend line. Um, and again, to show you that, so that's gonna go back to 2020. Um, I've got kind of like two of them drawn on here. This is the lower one. Um, but again, that weekly inside bar is still more dominant here and it's continuing to show up. So that red bar is still putting pressure on crude and really just can't get anything going here. Every time it tries to put in the low, um, you know, you have kind of a, a reversal shortly thereafter but um crude you know it's hanging in there for now just chopping sideways xle one of the few areas that's red today um so down 1.5 percent on the day interesting little dynamic there actually has a lower low and you actually took out the last couple of weeks of trading so xle under a lot of pressure here xop same thing um slight lower lows here and again still a big red weekly inside bar there on both the xop and the xle although you know the trend is nicely up so this can still go higher, but until that proven otherwise, until you close above this red bar high, that is um, still in play. Uh, let's look at the OIH here. Again, OIH much, much stronger here. Oil services just continue to be a powerhouse. Nice little kind of like long-legged doji, they call it. Um, up move inside bar, inside of the bigger red bar here, but this is holding up really well. Um, I would not touch OIH. Currently, that probably still wants to get up to that 350 handle. And then Nat Gas just can't get out of its own way, down 7% here. Um, this is coming to some interesting levels, though. So we have some pivots right down here around 240. Um, yeah, 242. And then we have another one just below that. This is like epically all time oversold here. Um, this is going to be an interesting trade to the long side. Um, historically, seasonally, Nat Gas is down into February. And then it trades up. I think I told you guys yesterday, it does trade up typically into June, July. I expect the low that this makes to be the final low in that gas for a very long time. So um, either way, right now, just can't get out of its own wave. This is one of the most one-sided trades I've ever seen um, outside of, you know, maybe like MSOS or something. But uh, yeah, NAC gas, we'll watch those lower levels there around 245, 242. Uh, dollar index coming in a little bit uh, lower. Again, we'll probably... At this point, we're probably looking at 150, maybe even a 100 whole round number test. Um, if we go back to the monthly, you can see that was your breakout. That never really got back tested. You're also going into that 20 month moving average. So that is gonna be good support there for the DXY. So we should get a bit off that. And again, some of the things we talked about here, um, again, the levels on the Dow transports, the XHB, et cetera, IGV, et cetera. Um, stones throw away well that 100 handle is really a stones throw away for the dollar so that would make sense correct um so just a little interesting little tidbit there on the dxy for gold again we're probably looking at about i think i told you guys yesterday 1875 1880 we're basically there now i mean 1965 that's uh, excuse me not 1975 1980 not 18 um we got up to 1969 
today. So again, possibly a little bit higher here. Gold just continues to hold up, but this is, um, it's almost as one-sided as NAT gas, uh, except for the fact that NAT gas is down like 70% <laughs> and gold is up like, what 20 percent or something like that either way um gold continuing to uh powerhouse here if you're long let me tell you again trail your stop protect it take profits do what you got to do um silver still stuck in this range this is good consolidation again i just don't like the rounded top look um, but outside of that you have a nice inside bar there on the daily platinum here another kind of tail candle i wouldn't do anything with it at the moment again i do think it wants to go down and test 975 uh, Copper futures here a little bit lower on the day, kind of violated that 20 moving average. Didn't quite get up to 425, um, but this is starting to make lower lows now. So um, we'll see here again. I still think copper has to go down to 395 to four bucks. Lastly, Bitcoin is, um, you know, it's not making higher highs. It's up with everything else. Um, again, I'd still give this the upside bias of 25,000, but this should be bidding up with everything and it really isn't. Um, ether holding up as well nice pattern there nice bullish inside bar for ether so again i would give that kind of the upside to at least 1800 and then you're going to come into a wall so you got a pivot high red bar so i'll give it the upside bias there but um bitcoin a little bit kind of um like crypto a little bit mixed here not not bad i mean it's up but you know it's not making higher highs here but again the pattern's fine um so we'll just continue to give it the upside bias as long as the market continues to hold up. All right, anyways, back over to the spiders here. So it's 3.52 p.m. Nice sell-off there. Wow, take a look at that. Good, good sell there into the final 30 minutes. I was just telling my members I think we'd probably hold up into the close. Um, but that's a pretty good sell-off here. There's only seven minutes left, so it's not really enough time for them to do a lot of technical damage. But I'll tell you this, um, 408, that's your level tomorrow. If that level breaks, um, you could have a fake breakout on your hands and we'll probably go down and test this lower band. If this breaks, then it's all she wrote. Um, so just be careful. Those are the levels I'm watching right now. Um, feel free to fade me if you want. Um, you're free to do whatever you want, I guess. Um, but I am not in the camp that this is a new bull, new bull market, um, despite uh, whatever you know, everybody's telling you on TV. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. You can find me on carnivoretrades.com. Talk to you guys all tomorrow.